college visit back in 1966 or 67. So, but I've been back a couple times since. And, uh, and my wife and I spent our honeymoon over at Houston Woods back in oh. 1970. So, so uh, we've got lots of history here in this area. So, um, who knows who's been to the Ark of Appalachia? Um, there is a difference between the edge of Appalachia, which is a fine mm -hmm. organization that's part of the Cincinnati Museum Center, mm -hmm. and the Ark of Appalachia, which is a not-for-profit uh, nature preserve system, as was Mickey mentioned, has 22 nature preserves. Um, and um, I first started volunteering there in 2008. I'd been to Honduras with the uh, University of Cincinnati Medical School for their uh, uh, tropical medicine rotation and uh, they had just left on a plane and uh, I was out in the in the wilds with my wife and a, about five others and uh, I it had been raining there as it does it was the start of the rainy season and uh, we had brought a pinata for them to, to play with the kids in this village and so they're out hooking up the pinata and they Somebody walked in and said, here's, here's a mask to put on the kids and go out and get the kids started. So I walked out, slipped on a rock and heard pop, pop as my tibia and fibula went in my right leg. And so, of course, the medical team had left about four or five hours before that. So, yeah. But I was able to make it home okay, called my son-in-law in Cincinnati, he's a doctor, and made arrangements for me to come back. So, but. Uh, trips like that and uh, so my first um, walk that I did with the Metro or with the uh, Ark of Appalachia I told the director whose name is Nancy Stranahan I said to Nancy I said I broke my leg in o October and this was going to be a walk in April I said I'd like to have a nice straight and level trail to take people on and maybe it doesn't exist <laughs> Yeah, that's Not right. There. So she assigned me to Ohio River Bluffs and Whipple State Nature Preserve. So as it turned out, that was probably the best thing I could get myself back in shape to do those. So, but the Ark of Appalachia is different than the Edge. And in February, the last Saturday in February, the Ohio Biological Survey is having their regional, their st annual meeting down in Cincinnati at the. Uh, Cincinnati Museum Center. So if any of you would like to come to that, please be sure to, uh, to, to look at your calendar and schedule. And uh, I'm gonna have Nancy, the director of the Ark of Appalachia, and try to get Chris Beadle, who's from the Edge of Appalachia director, to both tell what their organizations do and so to, to end the confusion. Because what we take great joy in is confusing you. <laughs> about the edge or the arc. But anyway, this is our new logo, and, and uh, we used to have uh, uh, Virginia Creeper, which turns a beautiful burgundy this time of year. But this is a Luna Moth, and who knows what this thing is? Oh, does it, what's that? That's the, called the Fib Fibonacci sequence. And oh. next slide you can see yeah, yeah, you see that a lot in seashells, and look at the bottom of a pine cone, check out a pineapple sometime, look at a sunflower, and you'll find that. It's repeated, it's a mathematical sequence that they've said, has, has some semblance to nature. So, so it's, it's an interesting sequence that we're just now learning more and more about, and seeing this repeated in a lot of things in nature. So, next slide. So what's new at the Ark? If you haven't been to the Ark, the Ark actually is not, an, it is kind of like an ARK because we preserve eastern hardwood forests now and for future generations. Not only of people, but of animals and all different kinds of wildlife. So we are in Bainbridge, and there's two Bainbridges in Ohio. You know, there's one up by Cleveland. It gets very confusing. There's a Bainbridge not far from Holden Arboretum, right? There's a bean bridge up there, and then there's this one. And those of you that had a very filling supper, don't fall asleep, no. Yeah. <laughs> this one? 
When I was a naturalist uh, with the, I was a naturalist before I became a, uh, the director of natural resources. And uh, one time I got uh, to do a slide presentation at a, a elderly home and uh, we're showing slides and it was scheduled right after lunch, <laughs> which is always, so after a while you, if you go a little too long, you start to hear some deep snoring sounds, but anyway, <laughs> hopefully we won't hear any of them. But what's new at the Ark? This is what the Ark represents, and that's where Appalachia starts. And notice it arcs all the way for, through the unglaciated part of Ohio. What's neat about this, if you look at a topographical map, you can see where the old Tays River Valley was, uh, east of Portsmouth. But this area of Ohio has the densest canopy and greatest wildlife diversity in Ohio. I work for the Toledo Metro Parks, and up here just west of Toledo is Oak Openings. If you've never taken a field trip, go up there because it's wonderful in the late summer. Lucas County and Adams County go back and forth with who's got the most rare and endangered species of plants. All it takes is somebody that's really involved or studies things like grasses or sedges. You can get us. And you know, there's people out there that really love studying them. There really are. Uh, I know of uh, Tony Resnicek up at the University of Michigan is a, a wonderful sedge. He even has a, a Carex Resnicekii named after him. But uh, once you get those people down there, they'll look at a surrounding area and spend maybe a, two hours just looking at a small field area where these different sedges are. But you get those people there and they'll discover new things. So Adams County for a while have more than Lucas County and then Lucas County, I have a sedge person go up there and they'll <coughs> find more. But uh, this is where the arc is and began. It's where Appalachia Hills begin. If you go on Route 50 from uh, Milford and go east past Hillsboro, you can come up over some of those hills and, and start to see a range of small hills which uh, it's wonderful, it's where Appalachia begins, but it's got dense tree canopy. Next slide. A temperate broadleaf forest of the world, this, these are the forests that turn the beautiful colors this time of year. And I'm so sad that, at, um, that ash borer has come into Ohio. I was actually up in the Toledo Metro Parks when it jumped over from Michigan. And so the plan was, cut all the ash trees. So they came and said, we're gonna close down Pearson Metro Park on the east side of Toledo and cut out all the ash trees. And so they sent in a tree crew to climb these trees and cut them down that like they would in your backyard. And so what happened? They ran out of money. Uh, I had them work along the parkways and around the parking lots and kept them out of the woods as long as I could. And when they were going to make their first swath through this old black swamp forest, that's when they ran out of money. So, and as it turns out, the ash borer was at least three years ahead of them, going off south, east, and west from Toledo. But we have share areas of the world, and actually in China, have these beautiful broadleaf forests that change color, deciduous forests, leaves change color. One of my favorites are ash, kind of turns a burgundy color. Another favorite is tupelo, or pepperidge, or black Blue gum. Beach, black gum. <laughs> Blue beach. Blue beach, yeah, all of those names. And I think we're gonna have some nice colors in the next few weeks. They're already starting. Next slide. And so you have forests, see these tall trees, and of course down on the forest floor are the logs and homes for salamanders and insects and other things. And uh, um, the, the whole idea is to have connectivity. And the larger the area, the better off you are. Because we get things like um, changes with climate change. You know, there's more um, birds that are uh, having their homes disturbed by uh, predatory, not only insects, but animals and other birds that lay eggs in the nests. So it's good to have big blocks of, of forest. Next slide. 
So here's what it is in Canada. This is a little bit distorted east and west, but of course in our area of Ohio, you know, down in through the Smoky Mountains, up in Wisconsin and Minnesota, and a little bit out here in West Olympia and off uh, through Nova Scotia are broadly forests in the US and Canada. So next slide. This area was so important, uh, was kind of a, the center of living for the indigenous people. And they would come down to the valleys and they would put up monuments to things that were happening. So we've gotten involved with the Ark of Appalachia, especially in operating Fort Hill, which used to be an old Indian fortification or site for ceremonial purposes. 33 different openings around the top of that hilltop. Who's been to Fort Hill? We also have one called Spruce Hill too, and you won't find any spruce trees, but they thought the Eastern Red Cedar were spruce, so it actually should be Eastern uh, uh, Cedar, Red Cedar, uh, hill instead of Spruce Hill. But this is kind of like what it looked like with the Native Americans that would take that bark from elm trees and peel it off and make shelters. They gather in during the spring and summertime to fish in the streams and catch the spawning fish in fall and winter they break off into uh, seasonal living patterns of going out and doing hunting and gathering in the wintertime. And that went on and on and on until contact with uh, the Europeans and the other settlers that were coming in. Next slide. So forest cover of the eastern United States in 1620 it was all this dark green area. This was all forested. By 1920, the Paul Bunyan effect had come through from the eastern forests all the way through to Wisconsin and, and Minnesota where trees were cut down leaving very few blocks of cover left. So for a lot of things that meant the demise of a lot of species and wildlife, we lost a lot of things, but uh, we're now preserving, uh, along with a lot of different agencies, a lot of these forests. Next slide. Springtime, I love it. Usually around uh, April 15th, around tax season, you'll see on these rocks along the Rocky Fork Gorge, you'll see columbine and a lot of Solomon seal and other flowers coming out. Who's, who here has been to the uh, uh, wildflower gathering in the spring? It's, it's great if you can come away or maybe take a day or two to go over and just see on your own the wildflowers as they come out. Whole hillsides of blue down along Route 52 in the Ohio River by uh, Manchester from the Larkspur. So next slide. So here are our preserves. Starting down at the Ohio River, we have what's called the Boone Preserve, which you can't really go there because the hillside is like this. Mm. You literally have to throw a rope around a tree and pull yourself up the hillside. There's also slumps there, but it was given by members of the Boone family. And um, coming up, most of our areas are in Ross County or Highland County and then coming down the river. Then we have some outlier areas. We have uh, a, a new uh, area called Ohio Hanging Rock, which is over in uh, Scioto County, and then a couple preserves beyond, and then up by e east of Buckeye Lake, we have Glenford Fort, and then all the way up here to the Kilbuck Swamp. We just are in the process of acquiring parkland there. And again, here's the arc of unglaciated Ohio. We, we have a lot to do, we have a small staff, and the thing, you can get kind of too big sometimes that you can't manage areas. But a lot of these areas, we do, uh, we have a land management crew that really goes out and removes the invasives such as the, the honeysuckle, and uh, you know, there's always, seems like something new is coming down the pike. We have something called Chinese Lespedeza. I don't know if you have it up in this area, but it's starting to move in. And uh, it seems like every year there's something new coming. My son-in-law works for uh, 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 USDA APHIS program over in Claremont County on the Asian Longhorn Beetle program there. And they're trying to keep in ahead of that. Next slide. So we have over 7,000 acres 
Actually, it's 24 preserves now. We added to just in the time that we talked. No, uh, but there's some lovely little places. There's Shaolin Naval, where the uh, uh, Trillium Naval comes out, the, the Snow Trillium, which is about the size of this. They have some also in, in uh, Franklin County, too, but there, there we actually have part of uh, Chaparral Prairie. We've expanded the, the eastern part of Chaparral Prairie where you cross the road has been preserved by the Ark of Appalachia at the request of uh, Natural Areas and Preserves. So we work closely with them and also with the Nature Conservancy and uh, other agencies. Next slide. So how do you get there from here? Well, this is from the east side of Cincinnati. You're up here, but you get on the Beltway and you could go out to Milford to Hillsboro, get out to the, this is where our headquarters is. The form is still called on state maps the Seven Caves. It hasn't changed to the Ark of Appalachia yet, but oh my gosh. yeah. And if you go out Route 32, you can come out to Peebles where GE tests its engines in between the hills back there. You can go to Peebles sometimes and just, you hear this roaring in the background, it sounds like something's really? taken off. Oh, it's well, it is loud, yeah, especially if you go to Davis Memorial, which is right there. And you can, for the scenic route, one I love is down along the river, past Ripley, believe it or not, and down here to Sandy Springs. This is one area of the uh, Ark of Appalachia that I don't go anymore, it's called Rock Run. Uh, there's these huge blocks of sandstone that they used to mine out, the Roebling Bridge in Cincinnati. The piers came from this area. They would take these huge rocks out and then either take them down a tram or just let them roll down the hillside, put them on barges and float them down the Ohio River. To, and there's like 20 different buildings that are still in Cincinnati area that were made from that sandstone. It's called Buena Vista Sandstone. And there's a little town there called Buena Vista too. Um, and so we have a a neat preserve down here, but it's not for the faint-hearted. Mm -hmm. So I actually went out there and, and hiked in the wintertime and was able to flush like, uh, 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 oh, I don't know, 10 or 15 uh, um, grouse from the, from the woods. They were back there in the hillside getting some of this winter sun on a sunny day. So next slide. So this is our operating strategy. We quietly buy back the land we don't use eminent domain. It's from willing sellers. You, there's some advantages to selling land to us. If you sell at a price that's less than appraised value, you get something that's called, uh, you get a tax break for that. So, and so some people look at that. Some people approach us and are giving them, us outright donations of their land. We don't take everything. We want to have rare and endangered species. We also want connectivity to existing forests or preserves. And uh, we want them to be quality areas that haven't been too beaten up by uh, humans. This act will not save the entire world, but it does peacefully and successfully save a corner of it. Mm -hmm. Next slide. So here's Highlands Nature Sanctuary. Rocky Fork Gorge here. The glacier came down to this point and stopped and then began retreating. So it left gravelly deposits there and mounds that are called came lands. So this is where it came. Who's ever been to Siegenthaler Esker? Anyone here? There's a few of us. Montgomery County. Huh? In Montgomery County. Right? Montgomery County, yeah. yeah. Siegenthaler Esker, it's, that's a glacial type of uh, structure. But uh, this is interesting. And this area down here had eight or 10, maybe 12 caves. And it was gonna be developed by, of, they were gonna put house, houses along this. Mm -hmm. So luckily, Nancy Stranahan and Larry Henry, two naturalists from the uh, state of Ohio, went down and uh, actually got a grassroots effort. Nancy had been running Benevolence, uh, restaurant in the short north of uh, Columbus and also working as chief naturalist of the state 
and they decided to go for it. It was a leap of faith to go ahead and purchase this. This area, Highlands Nature Sanctuary, is actually a state nature preserve. It's one, if you look on the state site, it's, looks like, it says it's managed by the uh, Arc of Appalachia Preserve System. So this is kind of where our headquarters are. Next slide. This is me, mm -hmm. all looking at an, a, a young azalea coming out. Mm -hmm. We have a couple different ones that are rare. Mm -hmm. I love to lead nature hikes, and I'm, I'm called upon uh, to, to take people on tours into areas. Uh, I'm always uh, concerned about safety and want to make sure that everybody has a good time and uh, comes back with a little bit more knowledge of the area. But this is at our Ohio Hanging Rock Preserve. Next slide. So this is the Highlands Nature Sanctuary. Here's Route 50. Uh, Hillsboro is back here. Chillicothe is back here. And it's between Paint Creek State Park, which is the regional epicenter for uh, honeysuckle in, the, in this whole area. It just loves to spread I there. Thought, I thought Oxford had it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think Cincinnati has should be, really, actually. It's a good enough expressway. But uh, we're working on trying to eradicate it, too. But we have Miller State Nature Preserve that's in there that has a couple of natural arches. And then we have some nice hikes. We have a prairie area that you can hike to. Some woods. This is wonderful to get down on the gorge. The gorge is about 100 feet high. And growing up on the top is Canada yew, which is more of a northern species there, which is neat. But it's also favored by deer. They like to munch on it, too. So that's one of the reasons that it's declining. <coughs> but uh, beautiful area. And uh, not only that, we consider what's going on in the community. There's Mennonite farmlands that are over here, too. So we've, we've uh, made a good relationship with them. And one of our preserves, we actually um, contacted them to take the farmland and we would take the stream bank back 100 or 200 feet back along uh, Rocky Fork. And that way they were able to preserve the farmland, keep it in the production, and we were able to preserve the, the corridor, the natural corridor. So we've got a good relationship going. <coughs> Next slide. Uh, in one of our publications a couple years ago, we actually featured a key, because people come to the area and they say, are there any places to go and get some local produce and, and shop? And so we featured this, and, and uh, as I said, it, it's a good mutual relationship. Next slide. So Rocky Fork Gorge, here it is, this beautiful gorge, these huge steep cliff walls. There's a plant that's can't, kind of a round leaf like this called Sullivantia. William Sterling Sullivan from Ohio State came there. And it was said that it was probably his wife that was the one that discovered it, but he got all the credit. Okay. Yeah. Doesn't sound fair, does it? Yeah. But, yeah. but <laughs> supposedly, and I haven't seen this in Columbus, where she is buried, his wife, there is a Sullivantia leaf on her tombstone. Oh, wow. So was Sullivan Hall an OSU name for him? No, that's his. That's a brother. Mm -hmm. All right. That's a brother. So here's a, a beautiful area down through uh, called the Three Sisters, if you ever get a chance to hike down there. It's slippery, watch your step. If you go after a heavy rain, it can be slippery. But Rocky Fork Gorge, and again, the glacier came up to here. We also have hemlock trees there, beautiful hemlocks. Unfortunately, we do have hemlock woolly adelgid that has come into Ohio. It's here, unfortunately. It wiped out many of the hemlock trees in uh, Smokies, Smokies in uh, the Shenandoah Valley, too. Uh, there is something called imidacloprid, which they injected in trees for ash, for emerald ash borer. You can actually buy it as a, as a pesticide. Uh, there's, you have to be extremely careful treating these trees next to the stream because it can get into the water. So there's care with all that. Next slide. And it's karst country. Have you ever heard the term karst? No. Coming through Ohio, like dead center from the islands, Putin Bay and North Bass and, and uh, South Bass Island, 
all the way down through the center of Ohio, kind of around the Columbus area. And then uh, there's an outlier over toward Bell Fountain where there's caves. These are limestone or calcium carbonate where water dripping down through has created caves. And that's where our caves have come from. But it's a beautiful show in the springtime. And uh, this is called Bishop's Cat, Bishop or Mitre Wart. And then this is how America used to spell relief. It's large flowered valerian. You know, Valium came from valerian, a different kind of valerian. But uh, anyway, and they, these are all water leaf mixed in here, probably with some maples. But it's a beautiful area to, to come down and see. Next slide. Jack in the pulpit, uh, wild geranium, something called uh, wood poppy, uh, also grow there in, in abundance. Next slide. Shooting star, this is what another name for it was, Pride of Ohio. And we have a little preserve that uh, uh, Rick Gardner asked us if we were able to purchase it, they were not. Uh, it's right next to Whipple State Nature Preserve off Germany Hill Road. And uh, it's called our Pride of Ohio Preserve. And it's only nine acres, mm. but it has lady slipper and it has lots of this stuff mm. saved there. It's, it's called a limestone glade. It's a hillside glade that's almost barren of uh, a lot of things because it's kind of a harsh climate. But those grow there mm. as well as... Uh, can, John, can I ask you a quick question? Sure. Does, has anybody done any research on how old those populations are? We have one here at the Indian Tree Park, a shooting star. And I've often wondered, how old are these? How long have they been there? Could, they could back, date back to the time of the glacier, actually. Wow. Uh, they've done some studies on skunk cabbage, and that's, that's a, not a good comparison, but skunk yeah. cabbage do date back to the times of the glaciers. Uh -huh. So that's a long time ago, so 14,000 years at least. Yeah. So. The, the washes hung out on the line, those are Dutchman's breeches, and hepatica. Uh, as my grandmother from uh, New Hampshire would say, hepatica, she called it. Next slide. And we want to restore native cave ecosystems. There's caves there. We have the State Division of Wildlife comes out every year and monitors the cave. Uh, fortunately, we don't have uh, the uh, white nose syndrome. In the, in the bats in the cave. Wow. We do actually have two caves that are open. One's along the Valley of the Ancients Trail when you head down to the creek side, uh, Rocky Fork. And there's also McKinney's Cave, which used to be a hangout for a desperado from Bainbridge. Uh, <laughs> McKinney would hang out in that cave and that goes back in. There are no bats in those two caves, so we open those up to the people to see because everybody's disappointed. What happened to the caves? You know, they want to see where the caves were. And uh, they came as little kids, mm -hmm. but we're saying now it's we're preserving them for bat habitat. And this is the only place that bats can go are in these uh, outlying caves that are now off limits to people. So, next slide. Red bat, mm -hmm. we see these every spring around wildflower weekend. What you do is go and check young buckeyes. When the young buckeye leaves first come out, they're kind of that reddish color. Mm -hmm. And sometimes next to one of those uh, buckeye leaves, you can see a little red bat hanging oh, there that yeah. migrate. Oh. And they live in the leaf litter. And then they migrate. Uh, Red-faced screech owl and a salamander, spotted salamander. Uh, I had, growing up, one of the people that kind of influenced me when I was a kid uh, we had a huge old Civil War cemetery across the street from my house in Elmore, Ohio. And this state wildlife officer named Laurel Van Camp would come over and borrow our ladder to check and ban morning doves. And um, one of the things he did in his 45 year career with the Division of Wildlife, he studied screech owls and identified that there were red phases and gray phases of screech owls. And he would give these great talks <laughs> on screech owls. And somebody asked him one time, why do you always put your screech owl boxes 12 feet above the ground? And he looked at him and said, 
that's how long my ladder is. <laughs> so, <laughs> not too much science to it, but it worked. Next slide. Here's a forest museum. This used to be the headquarters of the uh, seven caves where you'd come in and uh, see displays. Next slide. And now on the inside, we have lots of paintings by wildlife artists from the state of Ohio that have come in and traced what the area looked like at one time. Uh, this is more of settlements along the eastern seaboard. Uh, there's a red-bellied woodpecker on a tree. But uh, it's a good place for starting out. And a lot of the, we have a lot of the trees depicted what their trunks used to look like with these, some of these giant trees. So next slide. OK, so starting off from there, you can take a spur to the Three Sisters. Those are the islands in the middle of the creek. You can take a look and see this blue cohosh coming out in the spring. Just, it's lush and has so many things growing on the sides of these cliffs. Stuff even still to be discovered, I, mm -hmm. I'm convinced. We need to get some people that are uh, like uh, Barb Andreas to come down and study some of the mosses and lichens there. I'm sure they'll find some, some new species. Next slide. The trail is covered with trillium, mm -hmm. as I said, in Miller State Nature Preserve, and also at Fort Hill, there's natural arches there too, which are being preserved in the limestone. Again, this is all limestone. You can see where eroded down through the rock, some of the weaker sediments along the erosion of uh, the rock. Next picture. Okay, so if you've gone to McKinney Cave, you might see a new cave. We had a, a step crew of uh, my family uh, this is my son-in-law, Brooke, that's married to my daughter, Andrea, who works for the Ark, me, yours truly, and my other son-in-law, who's this guy that works for the U USDA, and we built these steps where you could access and come down to the uh, cave, McKinney Cave. So next slide. And here's the finished gate, which is my, one of my daughter's gazebos that we took down. This is, this is uh, uh, Cyprus. Yeah, so it, works out perfectly. It's stained since then. So it has a one light way latch. You have to ask for a key at the desk to go down to the cave, unlock this door. There's a secret way to open it too. If you have, if you ever see me, I'll show you where the secret opening is. But anyway, next slide. Okay, so we have saved over 7,000 acres in these preserves and uh, we protect the rich diversity of life within North America's Great Eastern Forest. Next slide. We also do earthworks. Next slide. Why earthworks? Few of the scale were ever built. The earthworks that are at the Mound City Group in Chillicothe, uh, most have been destroyed. Ohio's greatest and most singular legacy were these earthworks. You know, there's mounds as far north as Toledo, where the post office is in, in Toledo. The main post office was an earth mound. There's even one out west toward the airport at the golf course. There's a mound there. So these were the mound builders that went all over Ohio. Next slide. And here's some of the, uh, they've done LIDAR and ground penetrating radar to actually see where these mounds were. This is the first set that we preserved over here. And then this is another one called Steel Earthworks. This is Chillicothe. And so we have these areas preserved and uh, next slide. Great place for people to hike and learn about nature. Also to look across and see the hills on the other side of the Scioto River. That's where our great seal came from, was that area of Ohio. There's a great seal state park where you can actually see those three hills on our state seal. Next picture. And things have been drawn here. If you just hit the next button. And we'll just wait a second. Here's our sound portion. Kind of makes the call. That sounds like Dick Sissel. That's where it gets its name. But the real treat was the day of dedication. Go to the next slide. OK, our director is a wonderful person, but she tends to talk a lot. 
about all of the different things that people should see and discover. It was 105 degrees the day that this was dedicated. We're all standing there sweating, and all of a sudden, someone comes in from the outside and says, there's a Mississippi kite outside. Oh, Next slide. So of course, that was the end of it, and everybody went outside to see the Mississippi oh, kite. Yeah. And they've nested there since. Next really? slide. Yes. And here's where they go. They go from, well, it's not shown here in Ohio, but down the Ohio River, down along the coast of the Gulf, down along the northern coast of Honduras or the southern coast. When I was on Honduras, I was right here. One day I was showing, I would always take, when I go to Honduras, field guides so kids could see these different birds that we have up here. And I was opening up pages and all of a sudden we're looking out in the center road through the town which is a dirt road here comes a mississippi kite right down the middle of the road awesome also heard uh, great crested flycatchers down there too and saw um let's see still other birds migrating down through there too next slide yeah there it is next slide so we have Tremper Mound Earthworks that we're preserving. This started about seven or eight years ago. Um, it's an earthworks that if you're not familiar with what's there, this is ac actually the Portsmouth area. A lot of the earthworks in Portsmouth have been built over, so they're gone. There's a few on the other side of the river, but next slide. Uh, this, this is where it is, just north of Portsmouth on the west side. You can actually see a sign along Route 104 that says Tremper Mound. Next slide. Here it is. Here's the side of the river. Here's a little stream called Pond Creek that goes down through it. This was interesting because the Ohio, uh, Erie, uh, Ohio uh, Canal went from here down to the Portsmouth area. So there's locks here and there's locks here. So there's history there. An old railroad line coming out of uh, Cincinnati came down through here, but far long before that, it was it was an important area for people. Next slide. So this is it's along the scenic side of the Heritage Trail. Here's Tremper Mound. Tremper Mound. There's a mound. Doesn't really show you anything, but next slide. <coughs> Charles Whittlesey, who was a surveyor, surveyed a lot of Ohio. Actually came down and marked it out. Uh, here's the old road that went up to uh, Cincinnati, Portsmouth Road, and then here's the Ohio Canal. It looks like an animal, but it's not really. It's, it's more a burial mound. Next slide. So we've had work done. We've acquired lands here. The big thing was acquiring the 618 acres of the preserve. And for that, what happened was we used a program called Wetland Resource Restoration Sponsorship Program, which means if you're a municipality in the state of Ohio, if you, wanna, if you want a, a lower rate on your money that's used to upgrade your wastewater treatment plant, you work with an agency, a not-for-profit agency, and you can get a cheaper rate. The money benefits than the agency. So $3 million was raised through working with the city of Canton on their wetland, uh, on their wastewater treatment plant. So this is being preserved even as we speak. We acquired this is gonna be the nature center down there. And uh, it's really a wonderful area. Next slide. It's known for these effigy pipes and these Here's a facial feature, it's like, kind of like a bobcat. Here's a bear, raven, beaver, and otter, and the otter's holding a fish in its mouth. They, these are made out of pipestone. And a, there are sources of pipestone in Ohio, but some of it, this probably came from the Illinois area through trade. Next slide. And so this is what LIDAR showed up. These are all of the different uh, historical uh, aspects of this site. So it is an important site. Next slide. Here's some, uh, some more of these features a little bit more clearly shown. The problem is Ohio 
historical connection took them off display. There used to be a nice display, mm -hmm. but they are considered to be funeral type of uh, artifacts in that most of them were shattered or broken for burial. And so, but there's also a bunch of them that are at the British Museum. So who wants to be in the crew that goes over to the British Museum and asks for our effigy pipes back to, in Ohio? Don't, it probably won't happen, but it's interesting nevertheless. Next slide. And then there's these birds that have showed up. If you just hit the next one, we'll hear the bird. Sounds a little like a blackbird, doesn't it? Who's seen bobolinks? Yeah, they're great. Do you have them around here? Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Next slide. Okay, one of the neat things that happened, this is the view shed looking across the Satter River. This is Tall Grass Prairie. This is Route 104. This would all be part of the preserve. There's archaeology all over the place. American Electric Power, see in the next picture, they were going to put transmission lines right through the view shed. We contacted them and they rerouted wow. the lines. So the lines are out of the view shed now. They're not there. So I, I give them credit for at least uh, working with uh, our agency to keep the view shed open. Next slide. One of the things that neat things that has happened, we came upon this site, it's about 500 acres, just west, about a mile west of Tramper Mound. It's about another 500 acres. It has a whole hillside full of headwaters of Pond Creek and is adjacent to the Shawnee Forest. So uh, two weekends ago, we had the Sorghum Festival, uh, recreated from three years ago when it was postponed because of uh, COVID. If you see the next slide, you can see where this is. This is going to be a preserve that's just west of here. And so connectivity, it's going to be over a thousand acres connected mm -hmm. at some point, which is, it may take a while to do it, but it's, it's wonderful. We have Rock Run Preserve that's down here along the Adams County line, Ohio Hanging Rack. So these preserves are all interconnected. Next, next slide. This is John Simon. He was a vet, so he did an interview with the library system down there. And uh, he was the one that uh, came forward and said, really, I want to preserve this. And he used to hang out with friends, and they'd make music. And then he started growing sorghum. And there's a sorghum that you can squeeze to get sugar out of and boil the sugar down to make sorghum syrup. So next slide. So here's John working in his heyday. Here's John today. We all aged a little bit over that time. But uh, next slide. And there was even a, a quilt car there. Ladies had sewn together quilts that they put on the, I would presume that they don't drive down 23 with that, that, that it's probably only for parades, wouldn't you think? But anyway, that was, that was and if you've seen the, the, uh, the, the uh, patchwork barn quilts that are on barns, yes. that originated in Adams County, mm -hmm. which is really neat and now is spread out from that area. So there's a lot of history there. Next slide. So this is the most depressing job at the uh, Sorghum Festival, putting the cane through the presses. He's not really depressed, but he's working hard. Next slide. And so there's all these bluegrass people and. And the thing that's so cool about this is ridge tops. You you can hike over from ridge top to ridge top in the valleys or down through there. There's pitch pine, Virginia pine down here. There's blackjack oak. There's uh, post oak too, and we also have some southern Spanish oak, some southern uh, red oak. Very uh, acidic soil, is it? Yes. Yeah. Next slide. Here's this preserve. Here's all these little tributaries of Pond Creek coming down here and putting these pieces together. Next slide. Coming down for the ridge top. Great views. Next slide. Kilbuck Swamp. Why do we want a swamp? Well, 
I've got some experience with swamps growing up in the Great Black Swamp, not realizing it was a swamp until after I left. Uh, we wonder why there were those deep ditches in Northwest Ohio. Why did, they, why did they not think about us driving down those roads in our cars? As a matter of fact, we talked about our wedding coming down here. The night of our wedding, leaving the church, it was snowing because I married my wife on January 1st, 1970. So we're driving down the road and it's snowing and I looked at her and I said, let's spend two days for our honeymoon instead of one. And I immediately went in the ditch. So this is out in the, out in the farm fields just north of Elmore, Ohio in the Black Swamp. Pretty soon I see the light come on in the barn. Guy comes out, gets on his tractor, comes out, pulls us out of the ditch. I said, thanks so much. I'm so sorry you had to do that. He said, that's okay. I was just coming out to check the sows. So... He saved us. Anyway, 157 acres in Holmes County. Uh, this is, I think, American in the Lumbo that's there. Next slide. Uh, if you go to YouTube and look up Saving Kilbuck Swamp, you can see this video. I'm not going to show it tonight. But uh, here's Mr. Bullfrog there. Next slide. Here's our director, Nancy Stranahan, who started it all. And uh, we became familiar with this because we had a donation of land along the Kokosing River, which is a state scenic river by Mount Ver Vernon and Gambier. Mm -hmm. And so we found out about this and we're working to preserve it. We will not be operating it. It will be the, the Kilbuck uh, Watershed Conservancy District that's gonna be preserving this. So next slide. Here's where it is. It's north of Route 70 up here. This is this whole this is Mount, uh, I think that's Worcester, and this whole valley is a glacial valley. But what's so unique about the swamp, next slide, there's bowfin in there, which is, is there, and something called Lake Chubsucker in a state threatened species in Central Mud Meadow. So that's our logo to represent this preserve, is the bowfin. Amazing. Next slide. So we had, before European settlement, here was the Black Swamp. Gall Woods is up in this area. Uh, Pearson Park is over here. Uh, Howard Marsh is over here. This went all the way from Fort Wayne to Toledo. So a lot of the ditch laws in the whole state of Ohio came out of Wood County and Northwest Ohio. There were wetlands through here all the way down in through uh, the wet woods of Brown County and Claremont County and then even up in the Ashtabula watershed. This was before settlement, after settlement. Next slide. It's oh, gone. We've lost over 90% of our wetlands, only rivaled by California in terms of loss of wetlands. So, and it's also within this arch area of unglaciated Ohio. Next slide. So this is what the marsh looks at. If you ever take pictures of flowers, you know this, in blossom, then zoom in and see what was caught in the picture. Here's a, here's a bee and then it's the bee's shadow because there's a lot of things visiting these flowers. Dragonfly too. Next slide. And it's uh, trying to preserve this area. Continuing. Next slide. Here's Kilbuck. This is Route 62. One of the neatest highways across Ohio, if you ever get a chance to take it, is Route 60 from Vermilion down to Marietta. It cuts through the heart of Ohio, some of the areas of where there were a lot of uh, mining that took place, but this is where preserves are. And actually, there's sandhill cranes nesting down here, which is neat. Next slide. We also have Kamawa Prairie, which is a, sh it's a, a short grass prairie. Next slide. That me? Sorry. I'll shut. <laughs> Typical naturalist. I tried to get a bullfrog, but didn't work. So, uh, Kamama is great for insects. Fireflies have been great the last few years, learning more and more about predatory fireflies that, that will seek out the flashes of other fireflies and eat them. <laughs> Which is, BBC came and actually came down to the edge of Appalachia, did a two week study on some of the predatory fireflies. So this is Kamala Prairie. This is south of Peebles. Next slide. 
beautiful this time of year with the tall grass prairie that's there. There's actually um, prairie gentian that's there, only one of two sites. I happen to be with the Toledo Metro Parks that had prairie gentian up there. Next slide. Butterflies, next slide. These glades, these little barren areas, you might look down here and find a rare and endangered species. There's a Midwest spike moss that grows there right in the middle of the trail too, that's rare. Next slide. Kent State has become interested. They're, they've had, they've had a uh, camera up on the trees, the eastern red cedar trees, and then down at the base of the tree which, to see what climbs up the tree and eats the berries. Mm -hmm. And so when they first set up their cameras, one of the first things that they got was, next slide. Aww. This isn't their picture, but they did get bobcats and cubs. Push the next slide, we can kind of there you go. Metal mark butterfly, hognose snake. There's also case snakes that are down there. It's a wonderful area that's going to be accessible for people now. Next slide. And prairie dock. You know, prairie dock, uh, if it's cold in the morning, will turn its leaf this way. If it gets too warm during the day, it will turn its leaf this way to absorb less heat. We had some prairie dock in Northwest Ohio that had deeply divided leaves, which meant that at some point there was coppice plant, which is the same family of silphiums, that uh, bred with the, or crossed with the prairie dock and had these deeply dissected leaves. The coppice plant's gone, but the uh, prairie dock with the deeply dissected leaves is still there. Next slide. So uh, this is dwarf larkspur. This is that uh, uh, wood poppy again. That's crested iris, pink lady slipper, Canada violet. That's a little fumatory called, um, I can't remember. <laughs> it's not called I can't remember it. It's just I can't remember. <laughs> Next slide. And this is the uh, Trillium Nuval. Middle of March. Even if there's snow, you'll see a little opening where these things will be up, getting whatever pollinators are out. Very tiny, very delicate. Next slide. Walter's violet, an endangered violet, grows all over the uh, limestone rocks. This is milk pod, which is an Asclepius. Next slide. And who knows, what are our birds here? Cerulean warbler and we're meeting. Next slide. Good. This is what's so important to have these areas preserved. Land campaign in 2022. We've got three parcels now, but push the next button. You can see six properties. Keep going. Six preserves. One donation. We have people actually donating land and a lot still to preserve. We put up 25% for acquisition. The state through Clean Ohio puts up 75%. So we have a great donor base that helps to donate. Maybe some of you have too, thank you. Next slide. Okay, we've even gone over to the Hocking Hills region uh, to, to do some preservation. Next slide. And with the Hocking Hills, it's wonderful with all of the different birds that rely on these deep forests uh, to breed, so. Next slide. Pink lady slipper are down there. Next slide. This is something called showy orchis. Yeah, beautiful. Not very big. Next slide. Ferns too. That's uh, maidenhair fern. This is, yeah. Uh, and the mosses and lichens on the rocks are great too. Next slide. Keep going. This is hanging rock. We're going to kind of work through these quickly. This is over by Lucasville, by the prison, just east of the prison. It's in where there used to be a lot of furnaces. Next slide. Uh, charcoal furnaces were in Ohio, all the way from Logan down across the Ohio River. And the first iron for like the monitor and uh, for Civil War cannons came from this hanging rock region of Ohio. Next slide. And what, at what cost? They cut down every tree. I have a picture of Sciota Furnace not far from where Hanging Rock Preserve is. 
There isn't a tree there. There's not a tree left, but they're still in the seed bank and they're coming back. The, this is to represent the uh, passenger pigeons that crowded over the skies. You can imagine the huge tall trees that were there. Next slide. But we have these huge, beautiful rock formations. You can actually see at elevations 900 feet above sea level, you can see where an ancient lake was called Lake Type. That was back around the time, uh, glacial times, even before glacial times, that the water lapped up and, and left different uh, formations or erosion points on these rocks. Next slide. Trailing Arbutus, one of my favorites there. And uh, there's also mountain laurel there. So when I need a rest, I can go rest on my laurels. There. Next slide. <laughs> a little side of river access. We actually have a point where you can uh, access this river. According to Greg Lips, there's been hellbenders in this creek. We have a, 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 a trash problem, though, unfortunately, that we have to help to alleviate. Next slide. Little side of the watershed is here. This is Jackson over here, the Waverly over here, Portsmouth down here. A small creek, but high quality. Next slide. Another, we have a river access here that preserves us back here. Then we have another woods with some uh, formations that are there. Next slide. Rochelle Azalea, which is beautiful. It's listed in Ohio too. I think it's either threatened or endangered. Next slide. In one of our, this is one of our graphics in our center to help interpret that, showing all the things that live down here. Um, amazing. There's even things called brook lamprey mm -hmm. that are uh, predatory uh, eel-like <coughs> fish, eel-like animals, and our crayfish too. Next slide. And at Gladys Riley Preserve, which is just outside of Peebles, heading along Route 32 at Route 73, easy access. Those two little streams, there's one called Crayfish Creek, and there's an unnamed stream coming along uh, the roadway, have the highest uh, biological in index in Ohio. Hmm. The best water quality, the best fish. Next slide. So here's some of the scores of these two little streams. Bacon Flat is where this preserve is, side of Brush Creek watershed. Next slide. Here's some huge yellow buckeye trees right alongside the road. They're huge, humongous, along Sayada Brush Creek, or uh, Little Sayada. Next slide. Things like long-eared sunfish. Those aren't really ears. Next slide. Greg Lips, he's a guy who goes out on days like today and, and snorkels in these streams, looking under. You have to have a meter by meter size rock. And this is what he's looking for are hellbenders. And they've actually utilized prisoners at state reformatories to help grow these things and then release them back into these rivers. What they do is gather eggs. The male is usually in underneath a rock guarding the eggs from the female. And uh, they're very aggressive. You can get the male out of the way, you can grab the eggs and then take them into a an environment where they can be carefully hatched and then released. Greg, I've known for a long time. We first did frog and toad surveys at Oak Openings Metro Park. Next slide. So, yeah, here's Little Sayada. Next slide. And here's Ohio Hanging Rock. We tried to get an additional 70, 700 acres across from there. It's on Frederick Road. Uh, side of furnace is over here. Uh, this is real steep. You can see it's real steep ter terrain and some neat ravines, but that's been preserved. Next slide. And this is a, a family that gave this land 60 acres to the ark. It's right near Fort Hill. Next slide. This is Bill and Kathleen Bruns. They c it's called Shellbark Hickory Woods because of the Shellbark Hickory there. Next slide. And there's also purple fringeless orchid there too. One of my favorites. Next slide. So here's 
Fort Hill State Memorial. Here's part of the, uh, the state nature or the art property, and this is the new preservation area there. Right on the border of Pike County and Highland County. Next slide. We'll keep going. And we even have river terraces down by the Ohio River at Sandy Springs. Who's ever been to Sandy Springs? Go to the Go to the cemetery that's there and look around. Just don't sit down because <laughs> everywhere is prickly pear. And I guarantee if you sit down anywhere in there, you'll be paranoid <laughs> from the prickly pear. But there's also things like dwarf dandelion. There's oak openings, things down along the Ohio River. These sandy terraces are so wonderful that we've spent some time and we suspected that there might be some species there of interest. Next slide. If you push the next one, just one, we might hear pretty and it's unmistakable. There are spade foot toads there. The only other place was at a fly ash pit by Chesapeake, Ohio, that they knew where spade foots were. So there's also red trillium there. Next slide, Ohio River Bluff. Next slide, Manchester. Here's, here's Ohio River Bluffs. Go there at the middle of uh, April. Drive down, you'll see all of these bluebells. Virginia bluebells, also called Virginia cowslip. You know why? If the leaves get wet and you're a cow, you can slip and go down the hill. That's why the cows have two legs on one side that are shorter. <laughs> it's not true. Okay, next slide. Here's what they, I, I love the color that they, uh, is it don't coming? Need much. Huh? Deer don't eat them much. No, they don't. Uh-uh. Yeah. Next slide. And then also toad shade trillium, Cecil, Cecil B. trillium, I call it. Yeah. <laughs> next slide. And dwarf larkspur, yeah, it's gorgeous. Next slide. You can also see the hyacinth, hibiscus. No hyacinth. Wow, hyacinth. Yeah. And what's that? Just the lighter. Yeah, a little bit lighter. You're right. Beautiful though. Next slide. We have a new parking lot and trailhead there. After you go on our website, you can find out where it's where it is. It's off Gilkison Hollow. Next slide. And we have a, a, we have kind of an old style uh, trailhead system with graphics that show the features in those areas. Next, next slide. Okay, keep going. Lewis Family Gorge. This is up in in the area just north of the Highland County, up in Ross County. Beautiful little gorge with steep cliffs, limestone cliffs again. Next slide. And. Starting around here and there, a little predatory fish called sculpin. Next slide. So here's the headquarters. Um, our preserve over here is the Highland Sanctuary, and then just north is where those are. Next slide. Beautiful rock formation. We actually have you going down the side of the stream. You can see. We're going to arrange it so that there's viewpoints here that you can go out and not get into the stream. Next slide. And here's some more flowers. This is called uh, twin leaf. And very seldom seen because it's before blood root. And it seems like just in one day it's done. Yeah. And you can't see it anymore. Here's Sullivanti I was telling you about. Mm -hmm. It's an alum family growing on the side of the cliffs. And this is rock sedum or... Uh, uh, woodland sedum there. Next slide. And lots of different ferns. Yeah, next slide. Boom Preserve, uh, I was telling you about, is in actually Brown County. Next slide. This little guy is not Daniel Boone, but he's <laughs> descended from him. The thing that's neat about this, it's very steep. They have this rock wall that was built with some of the bedrock up on the hillside. Next slide. Look at that. Handiwork. Yeah. All done without mortar. Next slide. This is where it is. This is one of those things. We were out with our uh, 
uh, my wife's brother-in-law, who's disabled, driving around in his van. And uh, one day I saw, well, stop by Boom Preserve, for, saw a for sale sign. Called of it, we were able to get access to this preserve now. Next slide. There it is. So, next. The original 33 acre track was donated to the Ark of Appalachia in 2005 by the three Boone sisters, Josie, Patsy, and Naomi. This is Rick Gardner, heritage botanist for the state. Next slide. Who would be a great speaker for you, by the way? Crossvine, Bignonia, uh, which grows there at that preserve. Next slide. And mistletoe, getting into the holiday seasons here. You know how they harvest mistletoe? Oh, my brother, they shoot the elves. With a shotgun, yes. Blow it out of the tree with a shotgun, because it's usually way out on the limb. If you drive down Route 52, you'll see this clumps of mistletoe growing in the trees across the road. Pretty neat. Next slide. The Ark of Appalachia offers forest schools. We actually have a tree uh, workshop every year that we go out and teach basic tree identification. Next slide. And here's my wife, Faye. <laughs> they spent uh, one Wednesday a couple weeks ago making sorghum cookies <laughs> for the festival. Sounds bunches good. and bunches yeah. and bunches. And with the rain, that was when the rain was predicted from the hurricane. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, they sold out that day, so the crew had to go back in and make more cookies for the next day. <laughs> Lots of, it's a labor of love, though. Here's our trail blazers, partners that go out and clear trails, mustard busters. Um, <laughs> what was that? I was going to call the people that removed the Japanese barbary, I was going to call that group the barbary pirates. But I, yeah. <laughs> Next slide. Uh, Sorry. So guided hikes and events, our annual wildflower pilgrimage, the 16th is on 14th, 15th, and 16th of April. We're doing the Tree People Workshop in August. Look. I, I'm happy to announce this is the speaker, the next slide. Merlin Tuttle, the guy that started Bat Conservation International is coming to Cincinnati, uh, actually to the Ark. And at the Paxton Theater, you'll be there a couple times. If you don't want to sign up for the whole weekend, you can come her, hear Merlin talk. And so he's still doing speaking engagements and going to be coming up. So next slide. We also have places to stay. I'm wrapping up here because I know it's getting late. We have uh, places you can rent. Just go on our website. This is called the Zen. This is Beach Cliff. This is Leatherwood. This is, uh, I can't remember, but it's on 754. And then you can come and soak. Do you allow dogs? It's, yeah, I think you do. Uh, we do have dog dog trails. The state nature preserves don't. Okay, next slide. And then look for these lush areas of trillium in the spring. Keep going. And you might find a box turtle here and there too. So, uh, yeah, next slide. So this is what it's going to be looking like. This is from the this is from one of the state forest trails at Shawnee. Mm -hmm. Next slide. We create a landscape of hope and restore wilderness back to the eastern hardwood forest. That's our goal. Very simple goal. Next slide. And that's Dad out here with daughter Andrea, my youngest, who's working. She does the grant writing at the Ark. Next slide. And here she is in her MASH 407 shirt. She's a great resource. If you have any questions about the Ark, contact me or contact Andrea. Be, we'd love to answer any questions. Speaking of questions, does anybody have any questions? I know I, I've probably gone over here, and I apologize if I have. You're fine. Okay. Who has questions? Anyone? You can take a liking to these things over here. <laughs> I, had, I did, actually did a Puns in Nature walk once with another naturalist. We started off with like 75 people, and at the very end, I looked over at her, 
and it was just the two of us. You and Joe Boggs, right? <laughs> yeah. and, and one of the things I like to do in January or February is with a group, and it's usually toward the end of the group, is ask if anybody wants to hear the saffron in the sugar maples. So I get the whole group to put the ear up to the tree and get very quiet, and then I take off running down the trail. Thank you. Thank you. Our director, Nancy Stranahan, puts this together and does most of the writing along with some staff members. So. You'll see a lot of things from tonight's slide presentation and this one. So it's, it's gorgeous. Question. Are all the re preserves that you talked about open to the public, John? Five of them are okay. currently five. So you go onto a website. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Thanks. For the ones that aren't, we do schedule walks at times. And usually they may not be open because the trails haven't been improved yet. We just finished the long trail at Ohio Hanging Rock, so that's gonna be opened up. Mm -hmm. We did have a problem with a lot of ATVs going in there. <coughs> Shawnee University had a class going in there too and doing studies and, and um, so we, we ended up putting guardrail along the road. Used guardrail from the state we uh -huh. were able to get and so we, we blocked the ATVs from going in there. Now word's gotten out to, to stay out. Good. So, any other questions? Yeah. Thank you so much for inviting me. Been a great audience. What's that? It's at the edge of Appalachia is Nature Conservancy property. Edge of Appalachia is is the Cincinnati Nature Center's field office. The guy who invented Benadryl, Dr. George Rivershell had his cottage and property out there that he donated to the Cincinnati Museum Center. And then Robert Durrell, who is another benefactor from the area, actually donated some land too. So it's actually, they share at the Hewlett Center, which is part of the edge. The Nature Conservancy has a, their Sunshine Corridor office there. They're trying to preserve a corridor from Ohio Brush Creek Valley all the way over to Shawnee State Park via what's called Sunshine Ridge. They're trying to acquire up all that land. So they have offices like uh, Chris Beadle's here from the edge and then uh, Martin McAllister's over here, who's another good speaker, Martin McAllister, it'd be great. Nature Conservancy has been a partner with the Cincinnati. Yes, the Museum Center. Center. That's right, yeah. And they also have a preserve called Street Streets Creek too. That's over there that they've done some wetland mitigation and stream management there too. So, John, what do the local people in Highland County or just the, the property owners and residents think about the big solar array for the city of Cincinnati? I mean, it's all positive here down here about how great it is, but I'm just curious to know what the locals think about it. Some of the locals think that we're trying to buy up all the land in Adams County. Yeah. And there's resistance, but rather than we can speak, unfortunately, all day, we can speak all day about the uniqueness and the reason to preserve it, mm -hmm. but the bottom line comes down to income. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. the, the key is, is spending it for tourism. Mm -hmm. so, but the thing is, tourism, if you have too many tourists, mm -hmm. you're gonna destroy what you're trying to preserve. So we we're between a rock and a hard place and walking a tight rope. Yeah, so, you are. And even with the state forest too, the state forests have, have their mission that goes back to the 1930s, you know, for, for doing cutting of the state forests and then the, yeah. the money goes to the right. school districts. Right. And it's not a lot, really, yeah. when it no, boils ain't. down to it. But, so we're trying to work with the state forest to say, some of these areas next to our preserves, why don't you preserve them as, um, features for the future. Mm -hmm. Don't cut any of the trees mm -hmm. there. Let's mm -hmm. see what a white oak looks like in another two or three hundred years yeah. if yeah. it's allowed to grow up. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the unfortunate thing is that hemlock woolly adelgia comes in yeah. and yeah. throws us a curve. Yeah. 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 So, but it's, 
you know, I firmly believe that we're on the right track, really. Mm -hmm. And involving people, the whole dynamics of volunteerism has changed, too. I mean, people don't have as much free time, unfortunately. Yeah. COVID's yeah. really put a yeah. damper on a lot of things, too, as you know, probably with your group, too. How often do you go out there from Cincinnati? About two days a week. <coughs> Sometimes three, so. And I'm, I'm totally a volunteer. I'll, I'm, I'm just out there to keep preserving what we have. And I get into some exciting uh, situations, I really do. Uh, I haven't really been confronted. I'm never fearful when I go out there. I'm not allowed, my family yeah. won't let me go out alone. So usually one of them goes with me, so. But, uh, just a quick thing, uh, growing up, our idea of family vacations was 7K, Rocky Fork Lake, Lake Talon, and Pike County Lake. That was it. We might go to Greenbow Lake in Kentucky, but that was pretty far. Yeah. That was it. We did, uh, from near Toledo area, we'd go to Crane Creek. Yeah. If it was, if we had a really full day off, we'd go to Mohican. Yeah. Mom was always Beautiful. afraid we'd fall in the gorge, you know, yeah. slip off the cliff, or yeah. drown in, at Crane Creek. Uh, or the Oak Openings. Those were the yeah. three places that we went. So, yeah. yeah. But uh, it's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah.